attention. He would do some he would do some things for some change. He don't care what it is, you know. And Cabin, he finally gets up from the sofa and he stumbles his drunk behind into Maurice's room. And Q's trying to tell him that he's not going to go into the right room, but he goes in there anyway, telling Q to shut up. <sighs> terrible, terrible acting. Okay. So we know the girls are headed over to Karen's house. Honey, so Karen and Aaron, they're on the sofa and they are getting it in. You know? She probably thinking that he's Zach. <laughs> Anyway, they getting it in. And the girls walk in on them. Dead set in the middle in on them because they're like on the sofa, there at the door. As soon as you open the door, you see them going to town. And of course she tell the girls to go wait outside. And the girls are like shocked to catch them <laughs> and to act like that. And then he's like, oh, well, I guess it's something important. Maybe I should go. And Karen's like, no, you're not going to leave me like this. And so she got to finish. He, she needs to finish, baby. Yeah. So basically, Karen just step outside and tell them they need to go on by their business because she ain't got time. And so they just want to know if she went to the doctor or not. And she tells them they're going to have to wait. And Danny's like, oh, girl, you smell like sex communion up in here. And, um all that and but they walked in and he was tearing that up <laughs> well she just tell them to go on about their business for the moment because she got to get back to it so karen go back in and aaron he don't got back dress talking about he gotta go and they can't continue because he needs to know where everything stands and this is just gonna complicate everything dude you were just going to town with this lady and now you want to be all in your feelings about something? It's so ridiculous. I need him to just go ahead and get with Calvin. That's who Calvin can date, is Aaron, because I just don't get it. So our girl Andy has Robin to come over to the penthouse. And so she's all dressed in her sexy, beyond sexy lingerie. And of course, She's thanking him for, for helping Fatima to get out of jail. And he's also working on helping Zach get out of jail. So Andy's taking cue from her girl, Karen. And <laughs> the same thing she walked into at Karen's place. And that's the same thing she got into at her place at her penthouse with Robin. So they're on the couch. It goes down. Then we see old Gary. Gary's in his office. Glued to a telescope, y'all, looking out the window. And we can only imagine that he's looking out the window <laughs> at Andy's place. Gary is a straight fool. And Jake walk in the office with and see this fool like looking through the telescope. And he's caught off guard. He jumps around. <laughs> and Jake was like, I didn't know you were still here in the office. What you doing here so late? He's really caught off guard. And we can only guess that he's watching Andy in the penthouse on the sofa with Robin. <laughs> and then he looks at Jake and Jake's about to leave. And he's telling, asking Jake to my, have you ever done something so stupid for a woman before, man? <laughs> oh, Gary, Gary, Gary. <laughs> he's like really freaking out. So Jake has to pour, pour the dude something to drink. And so Jake's like, what's up, man? What's going on? Is this something to do with your ex-wife? And he's like, nah, I ain't about my ex-wife. And then he was like, who? Who is it? And then Jake guessed that it's Andy. He was like, yeah, Andy. And so Jake's like, what's up, man? What's going on? And he was like, he bought her an apartment for three and a half million dollars. <laughs> three and a half million dollars, Gary. <laughs> And so Jake's like, okay, well, you know, you make a lot of money. So he don't see a problem with Gary buying in the apartment for three and a half million dollars. And then Gary's like, well, she's in that same apartment now having sex with another dude. <laughs> and 
And so Jake's asking Gary how he knows this. And Gary, he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. He just knows. And like Gary, he's so upset because he looked through that telescope and he could see what's going down in that three and a half million dollar apartment that he bought for Andy. <laughs> he's like so distraught. So he just leaves Jake in the office and saying he had to get out of there. And so when Gary leaves out the office, Jake, of course, and I would have did the same thing, Jake. <laughs> he goes over to the telescope and take a look. And he was like, what? He's giving her back shots. <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, that's just not right. That's just not right. <laughs> so we get to um, Maurice coming home. And Maurice, like, nobody better be in his room. He's looking for Kevin. He checks cabin room. Well, Maurice comes in and he see that Q's not on the sofa. Because, you know, Q's been living on the sofa in the living room. And that's the first person he should have seen, right? However, when he gets there, nobody's in the living room. And so he's saying he better not be in his room. He checks cabin room first. Nobody's in there. And then he goes to his room. And when he opens the door to his room... He see that Calvin is laying his head <laughs> on Q's head. And I'm not the one on top of his body, but the other head. <laughs> and Q don't have on nothing but his boxers, his socks, and that ankle monitor. <laughs> but come to find out, Q was nursing Calvin back to health because Calvin was so stupid drunk that he went in Mar Maurice's room and he was throwing up and he's still very drunk and everything. So Maurice tell him that they have to get the heck about his room and that he would kill him if he messed up anything in that ugly behind room anyway. <laughs> this is such a great episode. Okay, so it's the next day and the girls... Sabrina, Andy, and Danny are standing outside of the hair salon waiting on Karen. And Karen pulls up. They go inside. And they was like, well, you know, they want to know the tea about her going to the doctor. And so she tells them, yeah, she went to the doctor. And they was like, so what? And so she said, well, she's barely four weeks pregnant. And they was like, okay. So that means it could be Zach or Aaron's baby because she was messing with both of them and she don't know. And of course, you know, our girl Danny, she's going to make a make Karen feel some type of way. And she was like, this is a Mo <laughs> Marich Popovich. Uh, who's the guy? That guy that has that show about the DNA test. The baby is not yours, whatever. I think it's Malvid Poltridge. I cannot pronounce his name. And she was saying it was that type of situation and that it was good. And she was like, why? What do you mean? And she said, because chances are it's not Zach's baby and you can move on because Zach's already moved on with Fatima. Dee, 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 dee. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Tell it like it is. And so all the other girls are like telling the other two girls are telling um, Danny that she needs to be quiet to hush, you know, and they, and she was like, yeah, let me just be quiet because y'all don't really want me to tell the truth or whatever. And so Danny um, gets to, well, Karen saying she's confused. They was confused because they asked her what she was doing with Aaron. You know, she was just on the sofa. They walked in and Aaron was tearing her up, you know, and she was like, well, she just wanted him. But she said she's really confused. You know, she just wanted to have sex with him, but she really liked him, but she feel like she's losing him or whatever. And so Danny says the most <laughs> smart she says the best thing she tells her that she don't have to rush right now that she has nine months you know to try to figure things out and that um just take your time and things will come in pieces bit by bit like a puzzle or whatever so <laughs> they have like a little defining moment and before danny can <laughs> Step out of the hair salon. She goes ahead and spills the tea about Sabrina dating a prince. And he was like, what? A prince? What do you mean a prince? And Sabrina is like, I told you not to say anything. She said, yeah, you told me not to say anything last night. <laughs> so the tea is out that Sabrina's dating a prince. All right. So at the law firm, um, 
they made the announcement about the two partners retiring and that um <laughs> the guy I can't think of his name the one that Annie's dating or sleeping with he bought he's part owner of the farm now and so it really takes Hayden by surprise and then earlier before they had a meeting to let him know about the new part partnership Hayden had went into Andy's office asking her how did she get Fatima out of jail and um Andy was like you're not the only person with connections and so Hayden told her it wasn't going to work for Zach and so they, she was like we'll see and then that's when she finds out that it did not work for Zach however um, their hair has been clearance where Fatima can see Zach, but she has to have an attorney with her. The guy's name is Robin. So um, Andy calls Fatima to let Fatima know that she can go visit Zach and that she can meet her down there because she has to have a lawyer with her. Um, so, of course, Fatima's fast trying to get to the jailhouse so she can see Zach. <laughs> so of course that little squirm of a warm Hayden he runs into his office and he calls up Gary and he tells Gary about Robin buying the company and that he's been lying about who he is and Gary's like he don't want to hear about this dude and then he's like man I'm telling you he bought the company and he was like wait he bought the company the law firm and so now Gary's worried that Robin's going to be living in the same town. He's like, so he's moving here? And then Hayden's like, yeah, probably, but you don't have to worry about that. And he was like, what do you mean? And he said, man, that dude is gay. <laughs> and Gary's like, what? What make you say that? <laughs> All right. So Fatima and Andy make it down to the jail to see Zach. And of course, they are happy to see each other. And Andy have Andy gives them a spill, which is a great message for everyone, even the viewers, especially. You know how Tyler Perry loves to throw those messages out there. It's a good one. So she basically tells them that Hayden is the person that's winning because they both ended up in jail. They're both wasting time, their precious time in jail while Hayden's still out being the clown that he is. And so... um the I think the defense attorney maybe comes in and he lets Zach know well he's talking to Andy and not to Zach but he tells Andy that Zach's not going to be able to post bail and that he um, violated probation and Zach's like I'm not on probation anymore and he was like yes you are back on probation because when you failed to pay your child support and got arrested that was a violation of your probation and so now you're not able to post bail and they're looking at 10 to 15 years for that assault. So just more trouble. And also Andy mentioned before the defense attorney came in that they both know that Hayden's going to try to sue them. Because that's the type of person Hayden is. So just drama, 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 unnecessary drama. All right. So that sums it up for Tyler Perry's sister's. Um, season four, episode 17, some sort of a woman. Overall, it was a good episode. Great job. Great job. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of funny parts, a lot of aha moments. So thank you guys so much for checking out my channel. Please like, subscribe if you have not. Thank you if you already subscribe and leave a comment. Why not? All right. So I hope you guys continue to have a great day. Be blessed.